Good, thank you. I am Mark Brinkmeyer. I'm chairman of the Idaho Forest Group from the Intermountain West, and I have the opportunity to serve our lumber products industry as chairman of the Softwood Lumber Board. And it is such a privilege to be here today from where we are in rural America, and we're all about rural jobs and rural investment, Mr. Secretary. And uh, to be here today in Manhattan is a uh, is a bit of a leap from North Idaho where we've been experiencing forest fires and other challenges recently. But our world is manufacturing precision rectangles and for us now to be in the non-residential space with the type of competition that we've had, which started here interestingly with Parsons three years ago, two years ago, which four years ago, how time flies. and. We also had a project that you are all probably aware of, which was the tall building that Skidmore Owings designed for the binational, uh, which was on display at the Department of Agriculture. And we had the opportunity to, with our checkoff program and the being with USDA, to get attention. Our goal being for our industry to have its rightful place in agriculture. And that's where we are today. So this is a $3 million project for us. It's, it's a significant opportunity for our industry to progress to the point we are today, where we have two projects that have won the awards, one to my right in uh, Portland and one here, of course, in New York, the site of which is just uh, one block north of us. I'd like to introduce uh, our softwood lumber team that made this thing happen. One is our CEO, Steve Lovett who's here with us today. Case Jagger, even though he's Dutch, he's pretty good. And also another sponsor is the Binational and our co-chair is here, Mr. John Gartland. Today, uh, we introduce Secretary Vilsack, who uh, I've had the opportunity to meet a couple of times. Not only has he been a great Secretary of Agriculture, but he was also a great governor in my home state of Iowa, where we continue to operate. I want to thank the Secretary for his insights into the importance of wood in the build environment, his support of our industry, and especially his big idea that led to this competition. This competition could not have taken place without his idea and strong support from the Department of Agriculture. In this regard, to especially thank Patrick Holmes, who worked with us, gave us guidance, educated us on how things work so that this could come together. His leadership and guidance, uh, he has his fingerprints all over this project. I also want to recognize Richard Ball, New York Ag Commissioner, who's here with us today. I also would like to recognize Rick Chandler, New York Department of Buildings. And we are also going to have some uh, comments after the secretary speaks from Anale Halova and also from Jeff Spiritos to talk about their projects. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, we'll recognize and receive Secretary Vilsack. Thank you, Mark. Thanks very much. Thank you. Mark, uh, thank you all. Thank you very much. Uh, this is a, a day, I believe, that stirs the imagination. Uh, as we introduce to America a new opportunity to use wood, one of our oldest building materials, in a very new and creative way to construct multi-story buildings. USDA, in conjunction, as Mark indicated, with the Softwood Lumber Council, is awarding two projects today, $1.5 million each, for the purpose of advancing these two great projects. The project here in New York City uh, is designed to be a beautifully designed 10-story condominium project using wood as its principal structural material. In Portland, uh, we're going to see that same concept that's used to construct a 12-story multi-story and multi-purpose urban redevelopment project that will include retail as well as apartment opportunities. Why the award? and why USDA? I'm sure the commissioner's probably asking himself that, and the building commissioner. Well, the award really is designed to provide an incentive to reduce the cost of 
introducing this new technology to America. We know that there are additional upfront costs that are associated with the design of a building made predominantly from wood. We know that there are additional permits and studies and design tests that have to be done, all of which can increase the cost of a project. So USDA, in conjunction with the Softwood Lumber Council, believed it was appropriate to help defray those expenses to encourage the opportunity for these projects to be built in two of our great cities. USDA's involvement is multifunctioned and multifaceted. It first and foremost is a concern for the health of our force. Today, throughout the United States, you can't turn on the news without seeing information about forest fires that are burning in the West. We have a lot of restoration efforts that have to be undertaken in order to make our forests more resilient and to restore them and to reduce the hazardous risk of these amazing fires. To do that, we need to create market opportunities for the wood that can be removed from our forests sustainably. Creating new opportunities to build multi-story buildings from wood obviously creates a whole new industry, a whole new opportunity. And it's particularly important in relationship to the 45 million acres of disease trees that we're dealing with out in the West as a result of climate. And that's the second reason that USDA is involved in this. We're concerned, as I know many here in this city are concerned, about the impacts of climate change. And we believe it's appropriate and necessary for us to take steps not only to adapt and mitigate to a changing climate, but also to reduce the risk of it being worse. So that's why we established a series of building blocks to encourage agriculture and forestry to reduce their emissions. The reality is that if we can build buildings with wood, we can continue to store the carbon that's in that wood, as opposed to seeing it burn up in a forest fire. So it is not just the healthy forests that drive us, it is also a concern about trying to provide opportunities to reduce the risks of climate change. It's also about energy efficiency. USDA is interested and involved with the Department of Energy and other federal agencies looking for creative ways to make America more energy efficient. And the reality is this construction is designed to be so tight that these constructions and these buildings will be much more energy efficient than uh, traditional construction approaches. So we're going to not only do better for the environment and for our forests, but we're also going to use less energy. And Mark mentioned jobs. With the development of a cross-laminated timber industry in this country, we could create potentially over 25,000 additional good-paying jobs, and most of those jobs will be located where the trees are in rural parts. Now, this is all part of USDA's effort to expand wood as a building material. Uh, Patrick Holmes has led our effort in the Forest Service for all construction that USDA is involved in that is larger than 10,000 square feet. Build, wood is the material that we look to first, uh, and we're hopeful that that catches on throughout the federal government. We've also invested in several hundred wood to energy projects, uh, and we're treating more lumber uh, than the previous administration. All of this designed to create new opportunities for a more sustainable rural economy. Now, America is introducing this concept today. Uh, there have been 17 tall wood buildings constructed in the last five years internationally, in Canada, and in Europe, and in Australia. And next week, officials from all over the world will be coming here to discuss a number of issues at the United Nations, not the least of which is our universal reaction and response to climate. The reality is for every ton of carbon that is stored in wood, that is used to replace non-wood in construction, we reduce emissions by two and a half tons. So this is great for the environment. It's great for energy efficiency. It's great to create jobs, and it's great to preserve our national treasure, our forests. So this is a red-letter day for us at USDA. It's a red-letter day, I think, for the forest industry and for the construction industry. And I want to thank the 
visionaries with these two projects, the Portland and New York project, for the willingness to participate in this competition and to challenge the status quo. If you can just imagine, in this great city where we're surrounded by quite a bit of concrete and steel, we'll now add wood as a building material. It will make a statement and hopefully it will lead to many, many more projects in the future, which will benefit all of us. So I appreciate the opportunity to be here and certainly appreciate uh, the commissioner and building commissioner being here as well. Uh, uh, they have busy schedules and, and for them to see the, the wisdom and the appropriate of this is, is very, very helpful. So I'm going to turn it over to the two project leaders uh, so that they can discuss specifically uh, how amazing these projects are going to be. They, they will inspire us and they will, I think, challenge us. Thank you all. Hello. This is a story, an urban rural story, an American story, a place sometime in the near future where tall wood buildings born from rural communities contribute to the formation of healthy, sustainable cities. This is a place, a place that unites urban and rural economies, creating a virtuous cycle from sustainably managed forest, wood production and manufacturing, to the creation of advanced wood products, to tall wood buildings, and back. With jobs, jobs, the creation of jobs, and more jobs along the way. Although this is a new story, it is already in the making. Right now in Oregon, forest landowners, lumber mills, manufacturers, and rural communities are joining forces with design, engineering, and development professionals in a collaborative ecosystem to write this story. The state of Oregon, the city of Portland, and our academic institutions stand ready to back such efforts, while the U.S. Tall Wood Building Award validates our movement. A pipeline of projects await in the wings. Framework, a rural and urban ecology, is a catalyst. As a values-driven project, Framework's mission is to promote social justice, environmental well-being, and economic opportunity. This is executed not only through the building and construction process, but also through the unique curation of programmatic elements intended for the building. These include affordable housing, offices for B corporations, retail, and a tall wood building exhibit that will be open to the public. The project will also include the future home of Beneficial State Bank and Albina Community Bank, whose mission focuses on tr the traditionally underserved communities low-income communities, sustainable businesses, and on job creation. Our team readily acknowledges that the development industry is a vital player in the solution, from building projects that reduce greenhouse gas emissions to advocating for advanced uh, technologies and building codes. Mass timber and wood products provide a way forward in the future of construction, moving from carbon depletion toward carbon sequestration while reaping the benefits of reduced transportation costs, readily available locally sourced materials, an accelerated construction schedule, and the natural beauty and versatility that comes with wood. Tall wood buildings will set a new standard in green construction while promoting economic vitality for rural America. Oregon has a legacy of exporting progressive urbanism and, and environmentalism. Since 1859, our culture has been one of resourcefulness and of making. The forest, wood, are ingrained in our buildings, how we make a living, in the fabric of our land, and in its people. Framework, from forest to frame, one of the nation's first tall wood buildings will build on this tradition, ushering in a new era in the built environment. On behalf of the framework team, project Lever Architecture, Home Forward, Walsh Construction, KPFF, and AIRUP. Thank you, Secretary Vilsack, the USDA, Softwood Lumber Board, Binational Softwood Lumber Council, and Beneficial State Bank for the opportunity to make this story a reality. Thank you. On behalf of 130, 134 Holdings, 
our highly talented design team at SHOP, Arup, i and Atelier 10, and our own team of Clemens, Erica, and Evan. We want to thank our sponsors, the United States Department of Agriculture, the Softwood Lumber Board, and the Binational Softwood Lumber Council. We are so honored to have been selected as a winner of the U.S. Tallwood Buildings Competition. Today is a day of wonderful beginnings. Today is the day my mother was born. Through loving care for her family, she instilled strong values that live on in our children and, in our ch and will live on in our children's children. And today, the era of tall buildings in the United States begins, heralding loving care for our forests and for the revitalization of rural communities in our country. We will look back on this time and realize that the face of construction has forever changed. You see, a building is like a human body. It's got bones, vital systems, vessels that propagate bodily fluids and other components, all of which work together in an amazing way. The structure of a building is its bones. Its framework, as a shout out to our bicoastal partners in Portland, that creates a body shape. And now the structure is wood, a renewable, carbon reducing, not carbon producing, warm, intimate, strong, durable, enduring material, and fire resistive material. It's one of the earliest building materials which through advances in technical research and production technology is proven to work to build taller buildings. A building's major equipment is the body's central system, its heart, its lungs, its liver, comprised of energy efficient, resource conscious, resource preserving products. Energy and water generated partially on site and reusable to the greatest extent flow through the equipment as blood th does through arteries and vessels, wasting as little as possible out of concern for its impact on the environment. And materials that are made well with consideration for their source, their maintenance, their reusability and disposal, outfit the building like skin and muscles and tissue fill out a body. Our world is increasingly caring about climate conscious strategies, many of which have been around for a while and which are thankfully ever improving. But until now, a major body part has been missing. Wood is the missing piece that completes the being, that causes a building to be built, to behave, to live, to breathe, to work, as Erica says, like a healthy building system, like a healthy building ecosystem. And perhaps, now that wood is in the picture, we will see a next generation of buildings. So thanks again to the Department of Agriculture, Softwood Lumber Board, and the Binational Tall Softwood Lumber Council for selecting us. We are so honored to be a part of this future. Good morning, everybody. My name is Rick Chandler. I'm the commissioner of the New York City Department of Buildings. I'd like to uh, welcome our friends from out west uh, to New York City. On behalf of Mayor de Blasio, I'd like to say welcome. We're kind of undergoing a little bit of a construction boom ourselves here, if you can tell, especially if you look up the road a little bit. 
Um, so we're very excited to, to be here today. I'm normally at this place enjoying an adult beverage and maybe a picnic. So I got to say it's, it's, it's a great honor to be here for such an exciting project. So um, let's, let's uh, celebrate this, this great day. So today's events highlight an innovative form of development by going back to basics, as we've heard, wood-based structural building materials like cross-laminated timber showcase architectural and commercial viability and are becoming the latest innovation in tall building construction. These innovative products have the potential to create boundless possibilities in both residential and commercial construction, as evidenced in today's winning designs. One winning design is framework, as you've heard, a mixed-use development in Portland. Another is right here in the city. DOB is currently reviewing the, proposal con the proposed conceptual approach for a proposed residential building. I'd like to take this opportunity to recognize my great team, uh, Gus Sarakis, Joe Aykroyd, Keith Wen, and Wendy Wong. These are the folks who are going to be looking at these drawings carefully and ensuring that this unique uh, urban environment is going to have a safe timber structure right here in the heart of Manhattan. We're thrilled about the opportunity and excited for the potential to incorporate these emerging technologies in what would be the first high-rise building in the city using these materials. The department's highest priority is safe development, and we, in partnership with other city agencies, are currently reviewing the design of the timber high-rise to ensure an equivalent or higher level of fire and life safety is provided as compared to our current building code requirements. There are some barriers in adopting new building materials and systems, most notably the costs of analyzing design and engineering alternatives and verifying that these solutions comply with applicable codes. Once regulated, those wood-based products can be used as sustainable alternatives to concrete, masonry, and steel. And the added benefit of using wood reduces greenhouse gas emissions by storing carbon and simultaneously offsetting emissions from conventional building materials. There are more than one million buildings in New York City, and they generate nearly three-quarters of our carbon emissions. To achieve any meaningful reduction in our carbon footprint, we must focus on our buildings and preventing the most extreme impacts of climate change. Last year, during Climate Week, Mayor de Blasio released his One City Built to Last plan. The plan makes New York City the largest city to adopt the 80 by 50 standard. And over the next 10 years, the goal of the plan is to make city-owned buildings models of energy efficiency and renewable energy. It's exciting to be part of the administration that understands the importance of this fact. The industry needs more competitions like the U.S. Tall Build Wood Building Prize competition to help spur increased sustainable initiatives in construction. We must continue to pursue innovative avenues that extend beyond the limits of what is known and what has been done to explore new ways of thinking and to create new ideas for building in today's city. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you so much, Mr. Secretary, for coming back to New York again, and to all our travelers who, who came here from around the country. It's an honor to welcome you here. Uh, you know, I'm reminded of a couple of things. First of all, let me say welcome on behalf of our governor, uh, who was not able to be here today, but uh, certainly wanted to be the 36,000 farms that make up New York agriculture, the Wood Products Council and our forestry industry in this state, it's an honor to work for them and it's an honor to welcome you here to New York. I hope the symbolism of where we are isn't lost on anybody. We're in the middle of Manhattan, lots of concrete, lots of asphalt, lots of steel around us, and we're sitting in this park light environment, this beautiful venue, and we're looking just down the road at where this building is going to wind up being built right here. When the governor called me and asked me to take on this role as Commissioner of Agriculture, the first thing we talked about was connecting the dots. Here in New York State, and in many states around the country, but particularly in New York State, we have great natural resources. We have great farmers, great producers, great forestry people, some of the best in the country. We have access to water, and we get to live and work a few hours away from the biggest appetite, the biggest marketplace in the country. And yet we know very little about each other. So every opportunity we have to connect dots, to connect rural America with urban America, 
to make that handshake between upstate and downstate in our case, uh, we have to take advantage of. And this is a wonderful celebration of that opportunity to connect rural America and our urban partners here in the city. So once again, on behalf of our governor, it's an honor to welcome you. Thank you so much for being here and for having the passion to see this through. Thank you again, Mr. Secretary. Well, again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you uh, for coming. This is a, a great opportunity, and again, to acknowledge our two winners. This is uh, quite an opportunity for us, and congratulations.